Hello, hello, Jeff Elvin here with Balan Brands, and today I'm going to show you how to set up forms using Elementor and making sure we include the fields that we want when we set up those forms. So the first thing that we're doing is we're going to access a page that's built with Elementor. So I'm going to my pages list here and I'm going to click edit with Elementor. And this is just kind of a dummy page I have set up, so we're not going to pay too much attention to the format of the particular page. But what we want to pay attention to here is the actual ability to add the forms. So uh, Elementor has a cool built-in form feature, so we don't have to have separate plugins or anything like that. Uh, we can actually use just their uh, basic widgets that they offer. So on the top left here, I can click on Forms. And because I do have Ninja Forms installed, it has a little widget for that. Um, but in this case, I'm actually just going to use a form that's built in. So that's going to be this one here. Um, so again, you wouldn't see this one for Ninja Forms if you don't have that plugin installed. But in this case, I'm going to go ahead and use this one. So what I would do is I would drag that over to wherever I want that form. And you'll see it pops in again. I'm not focused on the formatting for this particular video. Just wanted to show you uh, what we have set up here. So by default, we'll have a name, email, and a message. So if you look over here, we want to go ahead and give that form a name. So in this case, I'll just say test form. And the reason why you want to do that is because you can look at form submissions and you want to be able to see which form it came from. You might be using many different forms on different pages. So you want to go ahead and name that so you know where it's coming from. Now, like I said, by default, it has name, email, and message. It's assuming that those are all fields that you'd like. If for some reason you don't want one of those fields, you can simply just go ahead and click the X and it'll get rid of one of those. Uh, let's say you want to do first name, last name instead of just a single name. You can go ahead and do that. Uh, in this case, I'm going to go ahead and leave name here. So name, email, message. And I want to add a couple things to the form. So if this form was perfect just as it is, and that's really all you wanted to collect, um, then that's great. You don't need to change those fields. But I will recommend that in order to help reduce spam and other things, you're going to want to at least add uh, something like a CAPTCHA or recaptcha in this case to help uh, minimize the, the amount of spam that might be coming in. So you'll see here when I hit the add item, it labeled it item number four and it has this content and it has the type is text so i'm going to go ahead and drop that down and these are all the different form types that i can set up so i'm going to go ahead and click on that recaptcha version 3 and then it says here to use recaptcha version 3 you need to add the api key to complete the settings so in this particular case it kind of walks you through if you have not done that so um, that's a separate step. We have that in a different video, but just wanted to kind of point out why you might see that message. So that's one thing that you might do. I also want to go ahead and label this um, item a different name as well if we're going to. So it has an ID built in automatically, and then it's got this little short code if you wanted to use that somewhere else for that particular item. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and leave it the same. But label, we'll go ahead and call this um, are you a robot, for example. So if you want to have that showing up there, then you can label it how you would like it to show. OK, so that is how to do that. Now, there's some other fields. If you have advanced things set up, such as um, maybe WP Fusion or things like that, there's other things that you can actually collect on this form as well. So I'm going to go ahead and click Add Item. And I'm going to collect something like IP address. So in this case, we'll go ahead and just leave it text because we're going to feed that in. The label is going to be IP address. And um, I'm actually, instead of text, we're going to make this a hidden field. So I'm able to actually choose hidden as one of my options because um, Elementor forms actually feeds in. It has an IP address. So it collects that IP address. So I'm going to go ahead and put that. And I'm going to make it a hidden field because I don't want them to try to put something, my actual website visitor, right? I just want to have this as an available field on my steps here. So I go ahead and set that up as hidden, the label's IP address. Really don't need any of the advanced stuff um, because it's just going to feed in. So there's nothing special there I need to do. And there we go. That's really all I need to do on that step. So now that I have my form field set up, I have choices. So we have buttons. We can choose whether or not it's multi-steps or if it's just one step. 
I can label those next, previous, um, submit. So the submit button right now says send. So you'll see that here on the page says send. But in this case, I'll go ahead and put um, you know submit if I like that better. So you'll see it change right there on the fly. So these are a lot of different options that we can set up here, whether it's justified, centered, right, left. You'll see a lot of different options on how we can build that out. So in this case, I'm going to leave it as it is. I like kind of the default style. I just changed the name. So I'll select that. Then I can choose actions after submit. So there's different actions that are built in to the actual form, the Elementor form. So you'll see, for instance, we have collect submissions, we have emails. So there's different things that I can add. Do I want to send it to a webhook? Am I you know, sending it to some other, in this case, WP Fusion is something we have installed. So I would select WP Fusion because I want it to trigger my WP Fusion integration. Now, if you don't know what this means, you're just going to go ahead and collect submission and email. You're not going to change anything. It's just pre preset that way. And that's perfectly fine the way you have it. So when I have that collect submissions, now I can click down here and it says collected submissions will be saved to Elementor submissions. Great. So now I know where to go if I need to refer back to submissions that have already been sent. Now under email, where are we going to email it to? So in this case, it's going to email to Team at Ballon Brands. It's going to have a subject line. So I can change this maybe to the form name, for example, if I wanted to. So I can change this to, um, you know, test form submission, if that's what I want to call that, in case I'm getting them from multiple places. So I can set that up, and this is the email address going to go to. And then the message itself, there's little uh, markers here. So it says, by default, all form fields are sent via the all field short code. So here's a little short code. Now, if you remember up above, next to these um, form fields, there was this little short code next to each one. So if I clicked on name and I went to advance, this is the short code. So I could use, if I didn't want to collect all the fields in the email, I can actually just go to the individual ones and paste those right down in here into that little email box. I want to do it that way. So for instance, I could say this email was sent from and then do the, the name fields and their IP address was, and then I can do the IP field. So it's just a way for me to customize this message. By default, most of the time, we're just going to use the website, uh, normal website contact form, and we're just going to include all fields so that they get emailed right to us. Uh, then we can specify where it's coming from, the from name, if someone were to reply to it, where it goes. And then you'll see here we have metadata. So the metadata is the part that's being um, pulled in, like I said, automatically from Elementor. So these are the additional fields that will actually be sent to you on behalf of the Elementor form in that email notification. So you see how it's already got remote IP. So that's why I'm able to collect that IP address is because it collects the IP here. I can choose whether to send it to HTML or plain and have those options as well. Now, because I have WP Fusion as an extra integrated step, again, this is a separate video, but this is what is connected to our CRM that we use, which is Keep, formerly known as Infusionsoft. And we're able to actually feed that data right in. So I could actually go to like first name, for example, and have the name field go right in there. I can go to IP address and have the IP address. So this actually creates the contact record so the form submitted sends us an email, but then it also creates an actual new contact record in our CRM, which is pretty amazing to how this all connects and is automated. So those are all options that we have. Um, if you did have steps like step one, step two, step three on the forms, like a multi-part form, then these are those options. And then there's some additional options here, which you'll see is pretty straightforward. You can do a custom message. Um, that sends out. Again, they have a default one that you can use, but you can customize these standard ones that are sent as well. So once you are done with that, you go ahead and hit publish, and then that form is active and live. There's nothing else that you need to do. So again, to kind of recap, we go to the form widget. We pull up in the Elementor options. So I drag that over and drop that wherever I want that form to show up. I click on form fields and add whatever fields I want, hidden fields, 
recapture fields, um, text numbers, anything I need to collect, I can add those items in here just by simply clicking that add item and choosing what type of field it is. And then I can choose what I want the buttons to say, what I want to happen after it actually submits from the form, what I want to do with the collected submissions, which in this case goes right into Elementor submissions, the email that I wanted to send to me, and then the WP Fusion integration. So that is it in a nutshell, how to build forms and add fields to forms in Elementor. If you have any questions on this, uh, need help with integrations, something's not working quite right, by all means, feel free to reach out to us at team at